Today's wisdom is from Surah Al-Baqarah. This wisdom is very important and it links us to the early generations. The generation who lived with, with the Prophet ﷺ, they are the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So these verses are at the end, right at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. And they are very important in the life of every Muslim. Actually one day, the angel Jibreel was with Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And all of a sudden, some sound, a strong sound, came from the heavens, from above. And Jibreel looked up and he said, You know, O Muhammad, there is a gate that, is, that has just opened in the heavens, in the skies, that never opened, never ever opened before. Then an angel descended and came to Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and the angel Jibreel. And he said, O Muhammad, this angel said to Prophet Muhammad, I came to you with two lights from the Qur'an. There was no Prophet who was given these lights before, or any light like these lights before. They are Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening of the Qur'an, and the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, let's see what the light in these verses are and how important it is for us. Actually, it is important in our life because Prophet Muhammad told us that anyone who recites these verses on one day, then they will be a protection for him for the whole day. When we go to sleep, they read to these verses and learn them. We will read the verses, then inshallah, we will translate their meaning and talk about them. Lillahi <laughs> ma samawati wa ma fil Now behind these two verses, there's a very beautiful story that happened to the companions. First, the verse was revealed that where Allah says, to Allah belongs what is in the heavens and what is on the earth. And whatever you reveal, whatever you conceal, Allah knows about it. Any thoughts, any attempts, any intention, any notion, Allah knows about it. Whatever is in your soul, Allah knows about it. Whether you reveal it or you conceal it. And then Allah will take you to account based on it, on account of it. You will be held to account. Then Allah says, and Allah pardons whomever He wills, and He punishes whomever He wills. And Allah is powerful over all things. Now when this verse was revealed, 
the companions came to Prophet Muhammad kneeling down saying, Oh Messenger of Allah, you know, we were asked to pray and we can do that. We were asked to fast and we can do that. We were asked to do what is good and we can do that. But we have been given an obligation that is beyond our ability, beyond our capacity. Allah said that whatever in your souls, whether you reveal it or you conceal it, Allah knows about it and He will hold you to account based on it. We cannot control our emotions, our intentions, our notions. This is something that is beyond our capacity. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, looked at them and he said, Are you trying to do just like the children of Israel, like the people, the followers of Moses said to him, We hear and we disobey? You should say, We hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. So it was very difficult. Imagine that Allah tells you that whatever notion comes to your mind, you will be held accountable based on it. And He will punish whomever He wills, and He will pardon whomever He wills. So the companions tried hard to control their desires, to control their emotions, to control their thoughts, their notions, everything. They tried to control it. And it's actually, it's impossible to, con to control all of that. But Allah was preparing this generation for a wonderful mission, for a great mission that needs a lot of self-control. So Allah was educating them. Allah was elevating their souls and their hearts and their characters. Allah was making them a better generation to hold the message, to uphold the message of Islam, this heavy burden that Allah gave to human beings or to Muhammad and his companions to spread to the world. So because they took that upon themselves and they accepted the command of Allah and they tried their best to do that, Allah praised them. And the following verse when he said, the messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord and so have his, his companions, the believers. So Muhammad has believed and the companions have believed because they accepted that very heavy burden and they tried to abide by it. Then he said, they all believe in Allah, in His angels, His books, and His messengers. And they say, we do not make a distinction between the prophets and the messengers. And they say, we hear and we obey. Although they were given, they were charged with a huge responsibility to control their thoughts, to control their notions, to control their minds, to control their desires and everything in themselves. They said, we hear and we obey. Oh Allah, grant us forgiveness. O oh, our Lord, you shall, to you we shall be returned. So Allah praised them for that. Then Allah abrogated the first verse that He will hold them to account to, uh, based on or on account of their notions and their thoughts. But Allah said after that, He taught them a supplication. He abrogated the meaning in that verse and He revealed or relieved them out of that. And He said, Allah does not burden a soul or a human soul beyond its capacity. Allah does not overburden a soul with what it cannot bear. That was the relief from Allah to them. Then He taught them a supplication. Uh, for every soul will be the good that it has earned and it will face the consequences of the evil that it had committed it, or it has committed. Then Allah taught them the great supplication that will free them from all this burden. He said to them, say, Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget or if we fall into error. Oh Allah, if we, we human beings, if we make a mistake, fall into a mistake, or if we forget, oh Allah, forgive us. Forgive us. If we, develop, if we entertain some evil thoughts, some wrong notions or intentions, oh Allah, forgive us because of that, because we have our own weaknesses. Our Lord, do not place upon us a burden as you placed on those who came before us. A huge burden. Oh Allah, relieve us from that. Do not place it upon ourselves. Our Lord, do not uh, hold us to account based on our weakness. O oh Allah, do not lay upon us a huge burden because of something that we cannot stand, something we cannot shoulder. Then he's, Allah told them to ask forgiveness. O oh Allah, pardon us. Forgive us. Have mercy upon us. You are our protector. So grant us victory on the disbelievers. Now these verses are very important. They teach us something about the early generations, how dedicated they were.
Even when they were charged with a huge responsibility to control their thoughts, they remained firm. They said, we hear and we obey. And it gives us, or actually it indicates and points to the excellence of this generation. This is why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, the best of generations is my generation. Allah chose them to accompany Prophet Muhammad وسلم, because of their excellence. Because Allah cultivated them with this great responsibility, then Allah relieved them, relieved them from that. So now the wisdom that we can drag from it is the excellence of Prophet Muhammad and his companions and the importance if we want to cultivate ourselves to purify our intentions and our thoughts. Do not entertain any evil intention or thought or notion. And this is the way to purify ourselves, to strengthen ourselves. And then the last wisdom is that Allah will, will not overburden us and will always forgive us as we return to Him and will then grant us victory. Assalamu alaikum.